Hi, my name is Zachary Hoffman, and I've been doing work in Dr. Andrew Carduna's biomechanics lab for the Department of Human Physiology. My research has been involved with virtual reality, or VR, headsets and eye tracking cameras. Let me start by talking about what a VR headset is. Most VR headsets are composed of two screens within the headset that display images onto the eye and make the user feel like they're in an entirely different environment. New advancements in VR technology have allowed for eye tracking cameras within the headset that track the movements of the pupil and the position to determine where the subject is looking in the virtual environment. The aims of this project were to create a virtual test environment in Unity, which is a program development platform, uh, with a moving object and to have an eye tracking code that would compare the gaze of the subject to the position of a moving visual target at each frame. The first step of this project was to create the virtual test environment. I decided to make a room with four walls, a ceiling, and a floor, all of them gray. On one wall was a pink coordinate plane, and in the middle of this plane was the target visual object, which was a ball. Upon putting on the head-mounted display, or HMD, also known as the headset, the subject would appear to be standing in the center of this room underneath the spotlight. The Vive Pro I headset was used for this project, and before doing any coding, I decided to install the software development kit that was released with the headset. This development kit was installed and imported into Unity, and with modifications to one of the scripts that allowed for the visualization of subject gaze, which appeared as two beams, I was able to acquire gaze data, which could be acquired and exported from Unity. The gaze visualization script was called gaze ray sample. I applied some new variables within the gaze ray sample, and they were created to acquire, store, and modify some of the gaze data coming from the eye tracking cameras. I created a new variable called gaze direction combined, which combined both of the gaze direction vectors coming from each eye into one intermediate vector. This gaze direction combined variable gave me the opportunity to acquire both the x, y, and z components of the gaze direction vector 3. A vector 3 is a type of data value that stores the x, y, and z components in a 3D environment. I then created a variable that would store the individual x, y, and z components of the gaze direction vector 3, and also a time counter at each frame that told me how long it had been since the protocol was launched. Another variable was then created that would store the position that the subject was looking at and data from the position of the moving ball at each frame so they can be compared. To get a position value from the gaze direction, I used a raycast hit function. This function works like firing a gun in a video game. If the gun, or eyes in this case, is pointed at a surface when it fires, data will be output for the position its bullet hits the surface. Rather than a bullet, I like to think of it as my eyes firing laser beams every frame. In order to output the data in a format that could be analyzed in another software, it had to be structured in a certain order within the code. First, at each frame, a time counter was added into the variables that stored the gaze direction data. The variables were then updated to hold more data in the form of the gaze position vector 3 of the subject and the individual x, y, z components of the gaze direction and the ball location. Each of these was comma separated and each frame a new line would be made so that the data was all formatted in a format that could be read by another software. I also encoded specific instructions for how the visual target ball would be moving throughout the virtual environment. The target was given parameters for the minimum and maximum positions that it could oscillate between on the, on the frame behind it. I created another variable where if true specified that the ball would only move along the x-axis of the pink coordinate plane. However, if it was false, it would only move along the y-axis of the pink coordinate plane. I was able to acquire subject gaze data from one individual from the eye tracking cameras. Upon hitting a designated key, which I specified as the spacebar, data would be output from the headset into a text file. This data was formatted as time since protocol initialization, comma, gaze location, comma, ball position, comma, the difference between the two. Figure seven shows an example of what this output data looks like. Overall, the aims of this project were met and all data was successfully exported into a format that was analyzed in another software. In the future, this coding framework could be used for other biomechanics research involving virtual reality and eye tracking cameras. Before the COVID-19 restrictions were put in place, I was hoping to use this framework to evaluate Fitt's law 
also known as the speed accuracy trade-off for the ocular motor system. I would like to thank my research mentor, Kate Spitzley, and my lab PI, Andrew Carduna, for this research opportunity. Thank you.